I see skies blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night. Think to myself, what a wonderful world. Rob Reiner, it's a pleasure to have you Thanks, on Jack. Out of the Box. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Yes, it's my pleasure to be yeah. here. Well, you're doing so many important things. There are so many, uh, you're so multifaceted. Uh, and I wonder how you made the transition from Meathead on All in the Family, a really groundbreaking show, to actor, director, to political activist. How do you do these things? Well, I, you know, first of all, I, uh, Meathead will be there with me as long <laughs> as I live. Uh, I, I've often said I could win the Nobel Prize, it'll say Meathead wins Nobel. <laughs> so that, that's always going to be there. Uh, but I, you know, as a, as a young uh, a person in show business, I was uh, always interested in directing. I, I had my own improvisational theater group that I uh, directed and acted in when I was 19 years old that Richard Dreyfuss was in, and I was doing that long before I even uh, started becoming uh, known as an actor in All in the Family. So I was always interested in, in writing and directing, even at the time when I started in in all the family. But as far as uh, becoming an activist and uh, uh, particularly involved in, in early childhood development, this is something that I've been thinking about for about 20 years now. Uh, and I've only in the last six years become very actively involved in it because uh, it, it became very clear to me that earliest experiences that you have as a child had a direct correlation to how you function as an adult. Yes. And I learned that through therapy and, and in, in researching uh, what was being done in this field. About six years ago, I came across the Carnegie Corporation Starting Points Report, and it very clearly said in no uncertain terms that everything that I kind of instinctively felt was true, that earliest influences that you had from your parents would affect how you functioned later on in life, was borne out by hard science and new research in brain development. And then I started doing some uh, looking into what was going on around the country with respect to early childhood, and I found that there were a number of very good programs, but it was all kind of done piecemeal, very ad hoc, nothing with any kind of unifying uh, uh, overview and a unifying force to it. And about six years ago, I decided to uh, launch a campaign, and, uh, and one of, it was I Am Your Child, which started actually in 97, and the idea was to raise awareness about the importance of the early years, uh, to get information to parents and caregivers, and to move public policy. Part of the moving of public policy was the, the gave birth to uh, Proposition 10, which we passed last year, which was a cigarette tax, raised taxes on cigarettes, 50 cents a pack, in order to fund early childhood development, prenatal to five. Oh. It, this is health care, child care, parent education, and intervention programs for families at risk. So I am your child, your foundation, really segued into, into Prop 10, Yes, which um, it's, it, it's, it takes a little difference. As I understand the I Am Your Child Foundation, you're saying that children before the age of three are very susceptible to suggestions, to, uh, to people around them, to listening to stories and so on. Well, not and more than just suggestible. There, there is a growing body of evidence that shows that there are certain brain connections that are put in place in the earliest years. The foundation for language, which is the foundation for reading and all of learning, is put in place in the first year of life. So when a child is exposed to stimulating experiences, interactions between parents and caregivers, reading and talking to a child, holding a child, uh, playing with a child, doing all the things that you would say come naturally, uh, we are now aware that this is laying the foundation for what ultimately will become uh, the foundation for learning and will allow a child to enter school uh, ready to learn. So we're trying to make the people aware of this and to give them tools and uh, uh, programs that will uh, benefit them in helping them get their children entering school do, ready to do learn. Do you believe that uh, the education should start earlier than ki kindergarten? Should well, we, education, I mean, education does start from the day a I'm child I'm talking about formal born. education. Well, formal education, uh, you know, certainly uh, we're not advocating, uh, you know, a parent is the child's first teacher. And what we're trying to do is give parents the tools to do the things that they can do for a child. And also to provide access to quality child care for many parents. 60 to 70 percent of parents in this country 
two people are going to work. There are two wage earners yes, in the household. Yes. We need to make sure that there's quality child care made available, not just to make sure that the child is taken care of and gotten from one end of the day to the other uh, without getting injured and, or you know, ma getting hurt. We want to make sure that there are stimulating experiences so that that child is, ha is, is, is going to an enriched environment and that will ultimately benefit them later on and get them entering school ready to learn. Well, I have heard and, and I've read many articles that even uh, before birth, music, uh, some gentle surroundings does have an effect on the future well, of that child. Well, here, here are the things that, I mean, there's a lot of myth about all that. Uh, uh, first of all, anything a mother uh, puts into her body affects the, the growing fetus. I mean, so that we, we, part of what we do with I Am Your Child and part of what the Prop 10 funds uh, are supplying is a lot of information to pregnant women about stopping smoking. Uh, not taking drugs, not taking, uh, not using alcohol, making sure that they're eating healthy, making sure that they get regular right, checkups. All about, of those things are are part of the healthy development of a child. Right, all right, so let's talk about the Prop 10 situation, right. the, the funds that are generated. First right. of all, how was Prop 10 born? Prop 10 was a ballot initiative that passed in uh, in 1998, in November of 1998. Uh, it raised cigarette taxes 50 cents a pack. Those cigarette, that money from those cigarette taxes went into the Treasury, and the Treasury dispersed the money to the 58 counties. There were county commissions set up in all of the 58 counties of the state of California. Of the state of California, and each of the county commissions were, were appointed by the county boards of supervisors. The money went into discrete trust accounts at each one of the county commissions. The so there's nothing counties. siphoned off or anything no else? Money, go, money does not go through the state legislature. Yes. It does not go through the county boards. It doesn't go into building roads? No, no. It goes specifically for a discrete account, which is to be used specifically for health care. This is all prenatal to five. Health care for children, quality child care, parent education, and intervention programs for families at risk. And we ask as a state commission, I chair the state commission, and I and we have just we've sent down guidelines. The guidelines call for these services to be integrated, but it gives each county commission the flexibility to assess the needs of their particular county and determine how much money needs to go so for child care. It's all on care. a local basis. It's all done locally controlled, yes, yes. and it's you know so each county has their own specific needs, and we're we're allowing the county to address those needs. Yeah. Now, all right. So uh, the funds come in. It's the 50 cents per pack that's generated, right. and uh, it's administered directly to the kids, to prenatal, to education, to all of these great things. How much money are we talking about? The, uh, each year we generate in the area of 680 to 700 million dollars. It's a sizable sum. It's a sizable sum, 80% uh, of which goes to uh, the county commissions. 20% goes to the state commission, and they, the state commission is responsible for uh, education, for research, uh, for media, and for uh, investment in child care. There are many accounts, many accounts that the State Commission uh, oversees as well. All right, now, uh, obviously it's a wonderful thing, except maybe for the tobacco companies. How has that affected the sale of cigarettes? Well, the sale of cigarettes this past year, 1999, in California dropped 30 percent. That's a big yeah, number. It's a very big number. Now, in all fairness, uh, you know, a part of the drop was, was uh, attributed to the fact that the tobacco companies themselves raised the price of cigarettes 45 cents a pack to offset the tobacco settlement. And it's, it's important that people understand the difference between the tobacco settlement that the attorneys general made with the tobacco industry and the Prop 10 dollars that come from this one discrete 50 cent tax pack. So on actually it's 95 cents a pack yes, has been added, was to, the added price of to the price of cigarettes. And I would say the sum total has been the, ma the main reason why cigarette sales have reduced that dramatically. Which has to have the tobacco companies up in arms. I'm well, sure they're not well, thrilled with well, that. Well, clearly they're not thrilled with it, and that's why we have on the March 7th ballot Prop 28. Yes. And Prop 28 is designed to repeal Prop 10. And, 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 and the reason it's there is quite simply exactly the, the reason you said. Their sales are going to be are being hurt, are going to be continue to be hurt, and they want to make sure that that's is, they protect those profits. Is that totally funded by the tobacco companies? Yes. Or are, how about all these people who say, "Hey, you're 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 invading my civil rights by telling me I can't 
smoke. I want to be able to smoke any time well, I we're want not to. We're not invading anybody's civil rights. This was a ballot initiative that was legally put on the ballot, that was voted by the voters of California. Okay. Very, there's nobody's civil rights are being violated. And the fact is, yes, the, uh, the support for Proposition 28, the Yes on 28 campaign, is 100% funded by tobacco companies. 100%. Yes. So there's no other group. That's no, no, no. This is no, this they, is the tobacco companies pure absolutely, and simple. Absolutely. It's not. I, I mean, when I said civil rights, I'm 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 repeating some of the things that I have heard. Yeah. That I think people want. You know, they say, well, I don't want the government interfering with my business. I don't want them to tell me I can smoke or I can't smoke or I can do this or I can't do that. Well, we're not and, we're not telling. We're not forcing people to do one thing or another. We're pro trying to provide. We're just saying you have to pay a little we're, more. We're providing right. anti-smoking campaigns, smoking cessation programs, and a anti-smoking media campaign, which hopefully will get people to stop smoking. I mean, that's so a good actually, thing. Actually, the additional revenue uh, that we take in partly goes to establish propaganda against smoking. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. We have. We have smoking, anti-smoking uh, informational campaigns and smoking cessation campaigns, which are partly funded by propositions. Tell me, Rob, I, I really, I'm really curious about this. I, uh, as a marketing man, how, how can the tobacco companies put this out with any kind of credibility? Well, I mean, they, they must have, they're saying, I'm sure they're not saying you're killing our profits. <laughs> no, no, that would be truth in advertising. That would be truth in advertising. No, I mean, when we passed Proposition 10 over a year ago, uh, they had all kinds of smoke screens, uh, known, pun intended, yeah, that's great. Uh, 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 to, to try to get people uh, to not vote for it. Uh, they said all kinds of things like none of the money is going to go to children. Uh, they actually had a man named Wilson Riles, who was a former uh, superintendent of public instruction, get up and, and talk about how he knows something about children and none of this money is going to our schools. And the fact was, uh, he was just trying to divert the attention. The fact is, none of the money does go through to K through 12 because it's all designed to go to prenatal to five. But basically, he was paid for by the tobacco industry. They paid him ninety thousand dollars. So they're, they're telling the truth. Yes, but but, it, but they're it, it, but they're it, it, lying it, it, because it doesn't matter. Because they're lying be, what, because they're saying that the money doesn't go to children, doesn't yes, go to help children. Yes, yes. And the fact is, it does go to help children prenatal to five. Well, maybe they figure out And we don't that. know what they're going to do on the, on the t Proposition 28 campaign. We have no idea what they're going to say. But I will tell you this, that, um, uh, you know, the, the Philip Morris, yes. uh, who was the main sponsor against Proposition 10 back uh, last year, yes. they spent 20 million of their 30 million dollars that they spent on a media buy. Uh, they, have, uh, they have come out recently with all kinds of anti-smoking ads talking about how helping children to stop yes. smoking. They have violence prevention programs, domestic violence prevention programs in homes. They're coming out with lots of uh, 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 advertisements showing how good they are and how positive they are towards helping families. And what we're going to do is, in Los Angeles and in, in San Francisco, we're going to take out ads, uh, basically saying to Philip Morris to applaud them for the, kind, for the wonderful work they're doing in trying to help young children uh, not smoke and ask them to join the no on 28 campaign I think to ask them wonderful. to say if you really believe if you really <laughs> say what, what you're believe. saying is true and you really believe that then you will help us defeat proposition 28 which is designed to repeal yeah. uh, proposition but, 10 but isn't this like the wolf decorating its house so that red riding hood will come in well uh we're, we'll let we'll hopefully they'll they'll agree i mean and if they don't and if they say we're not going to support you, and they're going to give money to the people who are trying to, to, to kill our revenue stream, then, then the press will know about that. Now, well, we all know, and, and the, the entire uh, tobacco story has been told over and over again now, particularly with the film The Insider, uh, and, uh, and we all saw the uh, tobacco executive standing in front of a congressional committee and saying that nicotine is not addictive, and we know that's not, that's not the truth. Well, but, Dave, now actually, Philip Morrison uh, has come out and said that tobacco, that the use of tobacco uh, causes cancer and causes emphysema and causes heart disease and is addictive. They're on record now as having said that. Yes. So to me, how can you in your right mind say something like this and r support an effort to repeal uh, a program that would, uh, you know, promote the healthy development of young children? But Rob... If they're selling cigarettes and they're stopping youngsters from smoking, where's the future market?
Well, that's the. I that's mean, the, that's are the we question. saying? You know, then you get a lot of corollary things that come there. People say, you want to kill the tobacco industry? You want to put the tobacco farmers out of business? No, and what we want to do, what I would suggest, is you have a lot of land in which the tobacco is being grown. You can't tell me that that land can't be used to grow other things. Yes, yes. And that, that you can't tell me that the government can't sit, 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 step in and subsidize a transition so that uh, you can make an orderly transition to utilize that land in another way. Yes. Nobody's suggesting that, that farm workers or people who work in that industry should be put out of work, but why can't we make a transition to another sure. type, of, it to another don't, type don't, of product? Don't, don't buy into the yeah. same junk that we've been buying into right. all along. Uh, this is such a heated uh, debate. Yeah, I mean, people feel very passionately, particularly if you had any loved ones who died of emphysema or lung cancer, and, and, and when we were kids, we thought it was good to smoke, it was sophisticated, yeah. and all that other junk. Uh, but I think when you come down to the kids, and I'd like to just take a few minutes to show uh, your film, a piece of your film, on I Am Your Child. Okay. Can we do that? Sure. Would we roll that? I am your child. Whatever I know. Learn from you. I'm Rob Reiner, and for the next half hour, I'll be appearing on your VCR not as an actor or a director, but as a father, which is a lot more rewarding than those other two roles, and a lot harder. Well, you know, if you hold a small baby, a newborn baby, and hold him right, and then start talking to him, you'll see his eyes widen, his whole face will soften. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do that with your tongue? Yeah. I think when a baby goes ooh to you and you go ooh back, you're saying to him, you're important. Listen up. I'm going to teach you everything I know about babies. Babies wet and throw up. Don't get too close. Nuh-uh. Babies need to be holded and hugged. It makes them feel safe and warm. And makes their brains grow, too. And if you talk to them and play with them and sing to them, it helps them learn better. And just what makes you babies such experts? We're babies. Oh. The first years last forever. What excites Bruce Willis and Michelle Pfeiffer? Only E.T. can show you their cuddly new ad campaign benefiting director Rob Reiner's I Am Your Child Foundation. The pair recently wrapped shooting on The Story of Us for Reiner, and now they're lending their director a hand, posing with these little tykes who are both child actors. The charity is sponsored by Excite.com and raises awareness for early childhood development. As you know, Excite have a lot of different kinds of content, but we've never had specifically this kind of content before to help parents and caregivers of young children. And a lot of us are first-time parents, and we have a lot of young employees in our company. We felt it was time to start to give back. And we've built the site, firstyears.excite.com, in connection with the foundation. And part of the launch of the campaign will be that people can go to that website today, log on and get information about early year development, early childhood development. So we just felt it was an important addition to not only our site but to the educational opportunities that the internet could provide and we felt that we were overdue to start to give something back to the internet community and the community outside of the internet as well. Two years ago Reiner co-founded the nonprofit foundation I Am Your Child. The mission of its public awareness campaign is to make early childhood development one of the nation's top priorities. Now, through an exclusive agreement with Excite, the Foundation's good advice is available at the touch of a mouse. At the website firstyears.excite.com, simply type in your baby's due date or birthday, and the site will give you up-to-the-minute information about every stage of your child's development. There are also tips for mom and dad, including what Rob Reiner calls the 10 parenting essentials. What excites Meg Ryan? Children are our future. So hold them, read to them, talk and listen to them. The first years last forever. To find out how you can make a difference, go to excite.com and learn more about the I Am Your Child Foundation. 
child can form positive and nurturing connections with people other than his parents. A consistent, attentive, loving adult can make a very big difference. Sometimes, a grandfather can be a child's best friend. George, watch the guys, they swim. And they swim, and they swim. From birth to age three are the most important years in a child's brain development. The time that defines who they become. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. Good night, light and the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chair. Good night, kittens. Good night, kittens. Good night, clocks. Good night, socks. Rob, I look at that film and I'm touched. I am so touched. It is so gentle and so warm. And it's so far away from the passionate debates that we have and all the uh, vehemence and all the, all, all, all the bad will that's, that's generated. Uh, do you ever get, uh, does anybody ever call you out for this? Does anybody ever say, what are you doing? What do you know about this? Why are you doing this? Uh, you know. Yeah, I, I get uh, a lot of times, I'll, you know, people are very angry, uh, you know, with uh, certain things that I do, you know, but, I, you know, it was interesting. Uh, a few years ago, I, uh, you know, I, I've been under a lot of attack, you know, I mean, a lot of thing, things negatively said to me about me by the sure. tobacco industry and, you know, Rob Reiner's telling you how to raise your children yeah, exactly. and, you know, exactly. uh, you know, some kind, you know, it just couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, you know, instituting these programs. These are programs that are tried and true and affected, and we're just trying to generate some money to help uh, young children and put in programs that we know work. But I was, you know, I had a conversation with the First Lady, and, you know, this was back during a lot of difficulties and that they were having, and I said, you know, how do you do it? Every day you're under attack, sure. people say, and she said, you know, you, you, you take solace in the fact that you, you must be doing something right if people are that getting that upset <laughs> about certain things that you must be doing, but doing Rob, something good. Rob, I don't good. know that everybody realizes that here you are, you're in the middle of a brilliant career. I mean, you, you, you've, you've done some great, great movies, you've done some great appearances. Uh, I don't want to go through them, you've, you, you know, but just to bring out the exposure that you're subjecting yourself to, you know, uh, and in former days, you might be in front of the House Un-American Activities Committee, but how do you feel about that? What does that do to you? Does that, does that say, gee, I'm really risking my career? Well, I'm really, he, you know. Here's my feeling about it. I mean, you have, if you know something to be true, and I know something, I know something to be true, which is that if we provide enriched early childhood education for young children, we know that we can have a direct impact on crime, teen pregnancy, drug abuse, child yeah. abuse, welfare dependency, homelessness. We know that by making this investment early on, we can change social outcomes. Knowing that, and knowing that in your bones to be true, having the wherewithal to do something about it, and having the and access to resources to do yes, something yes, about it, yes. and then not doing something is negligent. Yeah, that I feel that would be negligent. So, so it, to me, it's not even a, a question of should I or should I not be doing this. This is something that I have to do because I know this to be true and I have the ability to get this done. So You're so, using your celebrity to... Absolutely. To, to, yeah, and, to, and that to doesn't mean that I don't want to make films anymore and I don't want to do that. And yeah. I'll continue to do that and hopefully people will still want to come see but the films. But your films are all uplifting anyway. I, I, I find them I, very I, I try. I hope they are. Yeah. I, I want As a matter of fact, I think that's one of the reasons we created this show is to say that uh, it's to highlight the positive side of life and the people that make it happen. And this is what you're doing uh, so much more splendidly than we can, but it, it, really, it really shows that people have a certain nobility to them, and that's what you're coming up with. Uh, with all that, do you expect to personally take this any further? Do you have any political ambitions? Would you like to uh, 
Well, you know, I, I don't have any political... Throw your hat in the ring with Warren Beatty? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, I don't have any political ambitions in terms of elected office. I do have political ambitions in terms of getting things done uh, and, wor and working within the system to get things done. That's why we, I passed Proposition 10 as a way of, of making a real significant investment for California children and hopefully we'll have a ripple effect around the country because ultimately my goal is to make sure that every child gets a good healthy start in life and enter school ready to learn. That's what I'm about. So yes, I do have those ambitions, but not from, not as an elected official, no. Well, I think that's the noblest ambition because um, I find that everything starts internally. People like you, pe other people who get involved and say, this is a terrible thing that's happening. We, we've got to put a stop to it. We're being subject to this pack of lies. Uh, we need, you know, I, I have this personal feeling now, and I see a young kid smoking. I, I want to go up and take that yeah. cigarette yeah. out of their mouth. Yeah. Say, what are you doing? Yeah, because they don't know what any better. What are you doing? They don't know any better, and the fact of the matter is the, the tobacco companies know that, and they market to, to teenagers because uh, there's no person, there's no 40-year-old person on this planet who had never smoked a day in their life, right. wakes up one morning and says, hmm, think I'll start smoking today. <laughs> Nobody. Yeah. The only people who start smoking are teenagers because they don't know any better. Uh, we see uh, uh, 3,000 kids a day start smoking, and 1,000 of those wow. will die prematurely. Now, if you are in a business where you sell a product that one-third of your customers are dying yeah. every year, you need replacement smokers. You need yes. replacement yes customers and the w best way to do is to market to teenagers so that's what they do they market to teenagers well i thought i thought that the 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 tobacco companies would be uh concentrating more on export they obviously do well at this point i would think you know they've so the, the, the 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 american market is probably mature in that and also educated or becoming more educated about the dangers of smoking so rather than sell something that could kill people in America, but that not as easy to do, you know, maybe they'll go to China where there's not this yes. kind of public education, or Europe where there's not this kind of public education. Although I saw that in Paris, which is, you know, every, you know, every person on the, in this whole city smokes a cigarette. That's right. There was a class action suit, and there was somebody who sued the tobacco, I think it was Galois cigarettes, and they won. So, I mean, even, even in other countries, we're going to see this kind of thing. I think uh, over time you're going to see a lot of people starting to become uh, aware. Rob, you, you, you have fame, you're a writer-director, you have a certain amount of strength, you have a certain amount of power uh, uh, by what you've done. What can the ordinary person do? What can, what can Joe, uh, you know, I, I was about to say G.I. Joe, but yeah. the, the man well, in the street, the well, woman in the street, what can The ordinary can person do? can get involved. I mean, first of all, we have a, we're, we're asking people to vote no on Proposition 28. Uh, and, and if they want to log on to our website, which is www.noon28.org, they can log on and find out things that they can do, how they can get involved, uh, either with, uh, you know, putting up a, a, a yard sign or handing out uh, 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 brochures or making a campaign contribution. That's how you get involved. This is so powerful, and it involves so many, not hundreds of people, not thousands, millions and millions and millions of people, I think it's, it's part of the future of, of, of our country and the well-being of the people. And, uh, well, it I is know. part of the future of this country. If you think about the fact that public education has only been around for a little over 100 years, and the reason we decided as a, as a society to invest in public education because we felt it at all inured to our common good to have an educated public because it meant for a better workforce a more educated workforce because we were moving from a rural agrarian society yes. into an industrial world. Now we're in an information age and it behooves us and it inures to our, all our common benefits to have a more educated public. Mm -hmm. One of the ways you get a more educated public is making sure children are entering school ready to learn. That's what uh, we're de we're, we're Prop 10 is designed well, to do and Prop 28 would take that away. So we have to vote no on 28. No on 28. No on 28. No on 28. No no on 28. And Rob, uh, we are indeed fortunate that you are who you are and you're doing what you're doing. Thanks, Thank sir. you so much for being on a, Out of the Box. Thanks, Jay. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day and the dark sacred night. Think to myself, what a wonderful world.